Hey guys, I recently came across a few articles interviewing Kensuke Tanabe, the creative director of the Paper Mario series, and I wanted to share some disturbing highlights and some disturbing quotes from that interview and talk about really what it means for the series. Now since the release of Paper Mario the Origami King, people have complained about the continued direction of the series, and you know that makes a lot of sense, there's still no real companions which were a huge part of the one on N64 and the Thousand Year Door. There are no real original unique characters, I guess you could say Bobby the bob bomb is, but he's just a bob bomb like for some reason they don't want to alter the looks of characters other than giving them hats or sombreros once in a while. And of course one of the biggest complaints is that there are lots of toads and they're extremely annoying in some of the recent games and on top of that really these are the core elements that people are complaining about and the team refuses to make the game an RPG. They keep making it a action adventure game and keep insisting that's what Paper Mario as a series is, is an action adventure series. But if you look at the first two games they're clearly Mario RPGs and they keep changing the battle mechanics in each game and so a lot of people are naturally accept upset about that. A lot of fans have speculated this was because of Miyamoto's adherence to keeping everything Mario based super simple, especially with story and characters and stuff like that. However, according to a recent Nintendo Life article, that's really not the case. The current producer of the Paper Mario series, Kensuke Tanabe, has this to say about the series, and I quote, Ever since Paper Mario Color Splash, we have almost complete control over the creative direction of the game. Mr. Miyamoto checked in on development once or twice, but there were no specific requests to make changes. However, all character designs have to pass a check by our IP team, which is pretty strict. Nonetheless, we were allowed to change the outfits of some toads in this game. And this is some pretty disturbing news for sure. This means the decisions fans have hated ever since Color Splash specifically were 100% the decisions of Tanabe and team. Tanabe has also stated that he wants to innovate and change battle systems each game, and he refers to the series not as an RPG, but as an action adventure. Which again, we've already established if you go and play the first two games, it's really not. This is especially annoying because of the fact that since it's the Paper Mario team making these decisions, combat really may never be the same. You know, they seem to want to innovate and change things all the time. And so one of the big things that people loved about the original two Paper Mario games was something that will never come back. And we probably won't get unique characters like Toads with not just different clothes, but different personalities, older, younger, things like that. And unfortunately, there won't really be incentive to battle again, tying in with the battle system. You know, especially in the recent games, there's really no reason to battle since you can just leave battles and the enemy will disappear. And these are just some of the things that fans have been complaining about. And it's really weird because we all complain about these changes. All, all of the fans of this series complain about these changes. And so do they not see our complaints or do they just ignore them? And if they do see our complaints, Will they change things to make fans happy or just continue doing what they're doing? Well, in answer to those questions, at the same time another article came out where Tanabe basically said he's not opposed to our opinions, but basically at the same time he is. And here's the quote. The game development philosophy I've adopted from Mr. Miyamoto is developing innovative and unique gameplay systems. I'm not opposed to the fans' opinions, however, I view my game development philosophy as separate from that. If we use the same gameplay system wanted by the fans again and again, we wouldn't be able to surprise them or deliver new gameplay experiences. We always try our best to exceed expectations in surprising ways. At the same time, there's no guarantee that we'll always succeed in doing that. So it's a real challenge. So I definitely know what Tanabe is doing here and many in both the video game, movie, entertainment industry in general have been doing it for a few years. He's trying to subvert our expectations. His philosophy basically entails that many fans ask for things, but he's likely to ignore them as we don't know what's good for the game and what we ourselves will enjoy. 
That sucks because ignoring fans shows them your lack of care for their your opinions. If you claim to not be opposed to fan opinions, then completely trash their opinions and the suggestions they have for your next game or how to fix the current mechanics in your game, you're just plain lying to the people who are lining up to buy your game. And you know, a lot of copies of Paper Mario uh, Origami King have been sold, so really you're just spitting in those people's faces. And I think this stems from a big ego and from the popularity of the franchise thus far. It seems that Tanabe thinks that, you know, whatever he releases, even if tra fans don't like it, and no matter how much it trashes their opinions, people are gonna buy it. And that's really exactly what happened with this latest game. I don't want this to be a toxic video. I don't want this to be something that people come to to trash uh, Miyamoto and Tanabe and Nintendo and the whole Paper Mario team. I don't want to hate on any of them. It's tough to feel artistically fulfilled while listening to fans and their demands. I'd get it. However, stating that using the same systems makes the game repetitive makes no sense, especially considering Nintendo themselves have been doing this with the Mario franchise. The new Super Mario Bros. series has essentially been the same game with different level designs and power-ups since its inception on the DS. Don't get me wrong, it's a firm formula that works, albeit making the games just good instead of great, like the series' earlier entries. But you're saying that you've adopted this design philosophy from Miyamoto, and that's just false. In fact, if you haven't played the new Super Mario Bros. series all that much, go look up gameplay of the new Super Mario Bros. game on Wii, and the new Super Mario Bros. game on Wii U, new Super Mario Bros. U and see how utterly similar they are. Other than a slight upscale from, I believe, 480p to maybe 1080p on the Switch, there's really not too much that's different about those games other than a power-up and different art styles. Slightly different art styles at that. So what's the point of all of this? Well, it just goes to show that hundreds of videos about a game and how you can improve the next entry don't always work. Sometimes developers are just too stubborn, and I'm sure Tanabe will say some ridiculous thing about why the series has become what it now is in the coming weeks, but for now, at least we have other games to fall back on. A prime example is Bug Fables. I haven't played it myself, but according to most people who have, it's a faithful successor to the first two Paper Mario games, with all the mechanics, combat, and wit intact. And most importantly, if you don't like how a game looks, or if reviews are saying it's not what you wanted, I know this has been said a million times, but don't buy it. You can be sure Nintendo will look at the success of Origami King and repeat the same mistakes all over again for the next Paper Mario game, whenever that comes out. So next time, wait for gameplay, wait for reviews. Don't support a game you won't like, or else history is just going to repeat itself until Nintendo stops making games. Or, in other words, until the year 2020. Get it? Because cause Nintendo isn't... Okay, you got it. Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave a like and subscribe. And check out my latest video where I took a look at the recent Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. Spoilers, I didn't like it. <laughs> Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one.